Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are continuing from using the loops and we'll be looking at nesting. Well, what is a nesting? Um, nesting is essentially when you have a, a list inside another list. Um, so you can think that as like a matrix or two dimensional arrays. So uh, this is useful when we want to represent uh, some tabular data, for example, like um, six hourly rainfall totals uh, for a given week, uh, as seen below. So let's convert this into our list structure in Python. Then it uh, kind of looks like this. So you can either uh, put it into a single line, but as we mentioned before, if we have a lot of data set inside, uh, then it might um, pass the 80 characters mark, uh, which uh, the pilot compiler will complain about. So instead, you can um, rewrite uh, onto multiple lines where uh, each line represents the measurement for each day. So rainfalls uh, of the previous data either can be written like this, but it's much easier to understand uh, when you arrange it as such. Uh, you could even make it so that a uh, number of characters uh, is matching. Um, however, that's not really necessary. So, if you just load it up in the editor, it will look like this. And I run it. I can call it. And of course, as a display, uh, without writing your own uh, re without writing your own um, display function, then everything's going to be listed uh, in a single line. Okay, but this way it's still possible to keep it as a, a list of lists. Okay, oh. and if we want to access um, certain week or certain day, then we access them as same as how we access lists. So by using a square bracket, we can specify uh, the location of um, day and the next square bracket will be looking at within the list that we have selected for the day. Um, so that's going to be uh, the hourly uh, measurement that we had. Okay, so we can quickly have a look. Rainfalls, I can uh, select maybe the second day. Okay, it's going to show me uh, the all readings in the second day. And I can further specify which reading I want. Maybe I want uh, the third reading, uh, say um, at midday, okay, then it was uh, zero at the time. So it's referring to this one. If I change to one, it should show us nine. Okay, so what does it look like uh, in our uh, memory space? Well, if you remember, the memory space of lists is basically your variable name pointing to a bunch of containers and each slot in the container is referring to the value, right? But in a nested list, um, instead of pointing to the value, it's going to point to another list, okay? So basically it's a container containing another container, right? So this container is looking, the first item is looking at uh, this new container and inside here is referring to each values itself. Okay, so hopefully this makes uh, much better sense now that we understand how singular lists work. So now we can write some loops to go over uh, and do stuff with the values inside our nested lists. So nested lists are often processed with nested loops because we need to take the values out uh, inside another list. Um, so for example, to print the previous table, uh, we can write up uh, a code like this. So let's give that a go. So I have it hidden here instead. I'll uncomment and I'll just run it. So this one is exactly the same one as the one on the slide right now. Run it. Okay. So it prints out the, da uh, the data that we want to see. Okay. So it has been nicely formatted for us um, using four character spaces uh, per um, uh, item to show. Okay. So we don't uh, end up uh, running out of space if, if even if the uh, number gets large okay so here the range function would help uh, instead of using the list of uh, 0 to 6 here 
right? So if we want to rewrite this for loop, the outside for loop, it's going to be for day in range seven, okay? And we know that we have four readings per day, so the inside for loop can be for column in range four. Okay, so you can give that a go as well. Okay. Um, we can probably make a better version. Um, so we covered enumerate in the last uh, video. Essentially, uh, an enumerate function returns the, the index and value pairs um, as a enumerate type, so kind of like a list type. It's not exactly an enum uh, list, um, but it returns us something that we can use it as an iterable uh, object. Okay, so here we can print uh, day zero dot format day because this is going to give us um, the zero day. Uh, this ends just saying that this print uh, function does not return a new line at the end, so it continues to write. For rain in day, days rain, so days rain is the value inside the rainforest, which is going to be our list. So we can uh, go through each item and print it out. So this way, um, for some of us, and hopefully many of us, uh, it's quite easy to understand how the structure is uh, and uh, exactly what information we are extracting. So we can specify the day and days rain, whereas our previous one, uh, we have the day and column, which may not really make sense um, if some other person is reading it. Okay? So now it works for any number of days uh, and any number of rainfall samples per day, whereas the previous one is stuck with only, you have to have seven days and uh, each reading requires uh, four uh, readings per day. Okay? So, the previous one will cover uh, some arbitrary number of uh, entry days, but it does have some problems when we uh, encounter some missing data. So with real data like this, uh, often what we observe is that uh, there are some errors or failures of uh, data collection such that it might have, it might have some missing data uh, on particular days or uh, certain readings. So, a common trick is to use a negative one to denote a missing data. So for example, um, the rainfall measurements cannot be less than zero, so negative one can be used. But if we are measuring data uh, for some values that can go negative, like say a temperature, uh, then a negative one may not be a good value, rather maybe some a very unpractical value, for example, negative 999, uh, for example that could be used to uh, specify that this is a missing data. Okay? So the code now must uh, also accumulate only non-negative numbers uh, to display. Uh, if uh, there has been a negative value, then what we want to do is not display that. So our pseudocode, uh, pseudocode essentially means um, some uh, not particularly a syntax correct um, code, but for us to understand by reading a line at a time. Okay? So what we want to do is get the data, what we had before, print the heading, and for each day we want to uh, clear sample counter and total. Um, for each rainfall sample in the day's rain, uh, if the sample is non-negative, this means it was a correct reading, uh, it's going to add the daily total and increment the sample counter. Um, otherwise, it's not going to do anything with the data. Okay? And then we can calculate the uh, average for the day. Okay, so let's give it a go. So if we convert our pseudocode into our Python code, uh, then it will look something like this. Okay, uh, if you tried it yourself, you may have a, a different version of the code, but that's not a problem as long as you follow uh, the logics that's laid out. Then they should behave the same way. Okay, so what we're going to have is the rainfalls. Okay. Um, typically, we want to read from files, but we're going to cover that uh, in the next couple of videos later uh, when we deal with files. Okay? And then what we're going to do is calculate the total average um, by going through the day, uh, day and days in rain. Okay? So these are our initial variables that we have specified before. And if the rain uh, value is actually greater than zero, then we uh, use that to accumulate the total count. 
okay, and the number of readings increased by one as well, then we can calculate the average. Okay, so comment this out. Moving on to uh, the next one. All of this. Okay, so this is the same code as you see here. Um, this is data from the previous one, so we're just gonna run this, and we get an error. Uh, <laughs> indent error, okay. I have a wrong error at 287 here. What have I done wrong? So uh, running this code, uh, we can see that we have the days showing uh, also how many readings there are. Um, each one showing four, which means there were no negative values here. Um, the total and the average. So we can also modify some of the content, for example, uh, minus one here, and maybe another minus one here. So in day two and five, we inserted minus one. If we run this again, then here we see that uh, day two and day five, uh, the reading numbers has reduced and the average has changed accordingly. Okay. Um, there's a, a bug uh, with this code as well. Um, uh, it's for you to actually find it and try to fix it. Um, for example, it fails if the data is missing for the whole day. Um, then it should uh, print star uh, for the average, for instance. So if the whole day has negative readings, then it should print a star instead. So you can try to fix this code uh, to do that as well. Okay. So um, there are some ways to avoid using nested uh, nesting of loops um, because the nested code structures are inherently hard. So you have to understand and make sure that the inner loop uh, can take care of all the items and sometimes not all uh, nested loops will have, say, for example, same sizes or same expected data values or types, etc. Right? So it is often better to avoid nesting uh, by writing inner loop as a separate function. For example, for, um, for uh, day days in enumerate rainfalls, and then inside here we will call another function to take care of what you should do with each data uh, as another function. Okay. Um, so if we restructure that, then it can look kind of like this. So here. For day, days in rain, in numerate, uh, what we're going to do is um, call a function called process daily rain uh, and then store the outputs as num readings and daily total. Okay, And then we can just print out uh, after calculating the average. And inside our uh, process daily rain, what we can do is calculate what we had before uh, and then return the num readings and daily totals. Okay. Ah, okay, uh, but the, this code is provided to you, so you can try it yourself. Uh, but essentially, this should behave exactly the same as uh, what we had seen previously. All right, so um, hopefully that uh, this video uh, helps you understand better about what we want to do when we want, when we're dealing with uh, nested lists. Um, but later we're going to cover uh, um, a of the library called NumPy, um, which essentially tries to address these problems of um, using different types of lists. Um, so yeah, we'll cover more about how to handle these type of problems more efficiently using uh, the NumPy library. Uh, but until then, um, next up is while loops. Bye.